You're listening to Classical Conversations. I'm Haley Taylor. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Uh, we have a very fascinating conversation as we chat with a member of the Catalyst Quartet, talking about their new album, with shines a, a spotlight on the chamber music of Black composers. Abby, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. So tell me a little bit about this project, because I know that the origins dates back to the summer of 2018, correct? Yes, that's correct. So um, the quartet was founded um, over 10 years ago. We actually, 2020 was our 10th anniversary and um, was founded by the Sphinx organization. And the quartet has continued a long partnership with the organization. And that comes with um, being faculty at their Sphinx Performance Academy. And, you know, for years and years and years, um, we had colleagues that were bringing in these amazing pieces that we had never heard of. And we were like, wow, these are amazing works. How come nobody else is playing any of these pieces? And, you know, in 2018, the quartet decided to sort of embark on this journey um, to sort of uh, to record and to perform all of the um, string quartet pertinent works of historically important black composers. Now, <laughs> at that point, um, the music that the quartet was aware of was not nearly as much as we're aware of now. So the title Uncovered became much more relevant um, as the project has continued. Um, So it's sort of grown into this four volume um, recording project um, that, that we are on, that we're in the middle of right now. Right. So this album is called Uncovered Volume 2, and it specifically puts a spotlight on the work of Florence Price. For our listeners who maybe are not familiar, can you you tell us a little bit about who she was and a little bit about her music? Yeah. So Florence Price actually um, was extremely successful um, during her lifetime. I mean, she was a brilliant prodigy, pianist, um, organist, composer. She um, attended my alma mater, uh, New England Conservatory, um, before uh, I think she went as like a mid-teen. And, you know, one of the biggest uh, sort of stars in her career or achievements amongst which there are many, she was the first not only woman, but black woman to have a piece... um, performed by a major American symphony orchestra, which is the Chicago Symphony. Um, She comes from uh, Little Rock, Arkansas. And, you know, she was born in the very uh, late 19th or early 20th century. And, you know, she faced a lot of hurdles in her life. I mean, it was definitely no walk in the park um, in her early adulthood Um, her and her family ended up fleeing Little Rock as the sort of racial tensions became um, so, so uh, bad and fled to Chicago, um, which you saw a great migration of a lot of um, African-American citizens sort of making that journey more to the Midwest out of the South at that time. But, you know, she really was quite a trailblazer in terms of, you know, really um, being notable as uh, a female composer, as a black composer, and, you know, very important in the music community, but also in the general, like, artistic community as well. And, um, you know, I mean, she just, to learn about her life and the amount of adversity that she faced and to see, like, the brilliant works that she um, produced is just really, I mean, it's just, it makes you scratch your head and wonder why is it taken this long for her music to get um, widely recognized, you know? Right, right, right. And speaking of those brilliant works, you know, you start the album with her piano quintet in A minor. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit of the history behind that piece of music and why it's, you know, right at the top, right at the top of the album. Yeah, so... um, The piano quintet in A minor, along with her string quartet in A minor, are, at least for the string quartet repertoire, her most sort of um, standard size, large scale chamber music works. And, you know, the piano quintet in A minor really sort of is, um, brings sort of the sense of you hear 
a lot of elements of sort of very like orchestral sort of sounds and like orchestral playing. I think if you look at other piano quintets of a similar time, you know, you look at Fauré, you look at Franck, composers like that, you sort of, it's really in line with that same sort of style where you have a lot of the string quartet playing together as sort of an orche- its own sort of orchestral instrument. And then with the piano, which on its own can sort of embody that orchestralness, um, you know, just because of the sheer nature of the piano. But, you know, when you're thinking about, um, you know, the order of an album, of course, you know, we are past the days of, you know, an LP. And even, you know, as you know, this album is, uh, is a digital release. So even beyond the time of CDs where you, you know, have to, you put the CD in and you just let it ride. But picking the first piece on the album is, you know, we still see that as something that's very important. And I think for us, it was important to pick a piece that really right out of the gate was powerful. And not only powerful, but also something that the listener could grab onto as almost a little familiar, something that wasn't so out of the realm of what they've heard before from more standard composers. You know, I'm sure doing this project, uncovering the work of previously lesser known composers, you've probably learned a lot throughout the process. And I'm curious if there's anything that stands out to you as an interesting anecdote or a life lesson that you learned through researching and performing and recording these works? Well, from the musical side, um, I will say something that was personally interesting to me was the fact that um, her compositional style does not stray away from traditional classical music compositional style. It definitely, I mean, you could sit down as like a music theorist and analyze her music just the same way that you would Beethoven or, you know, Mozart or something like that. But what's interesting to me is, is that in that sense, you know, there are, you know, in music composition, there are definitely sort of rules and normal patterns in which music is sort of formatted and sort of, you know, there is a little bit of a predictable formula that can happen. And that's not to say that there isn't any creativity in it, but it there, you know, as a musician, you come to learn these things and there are certain expectations. And what was particularly interesting to me was the fact that she remains within those bounds. Like she doesn't deviate from the sort of standard um, practice, but the way that she kind of manipulates it is, is that she goes with the more unexpected option of the formula, if that makes sense. You know, so if you have four options of a way to end a phrase and options one through three are very widely used, she kind of has a tendency to deviate in a slightly different direction, which was interesting because it's kind of taking tradition and flipping it upside down. And I think that's an aspect that makes it really interesting to me in particular is learning her compositional voice, somebody who studied traditional composition and is using traditional composition, but is finding her creativity and kind of flipping the formula around. Um, so I find, I find that to be a particularly unique aspect of her compositional style. And you mentioned that this is part of a series. This is volume two. So I'm curious as to volume three and, and volume four, what you have planned and, and what you'll be uncovering in these next albums. So the next volume, um, which we're hoping to kind of follow our pattern of releasing um, one a year, so hopefully that will come out next year about this time, will um, have the string quartets of Coleridge Taylor Perkinson, William Grant Still, and George Walker. So we're kind of moving forward in the timeline. That's very exciting, and I'm sure that you're excited to kind of tackle those two new albums, but... Thinking back to this one, I'm sure, again, there probably is the sense of excitement, but a great sense of responsibility to be uncovering and and, and promoting the work of African-American composers. Did you have that sense of making sure this connection was being made with your listeners to, to bring this new music? And, and was there a great sense of... Uh, of uh, anxiety and, 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 and sharing, you know, and, and having this responsibility to bring this music forward? Well, 
I would say that the biggest aspect of the, this project that sort of carries a weight is the fact that many of these pieces that we're recording, these are the first professional recordings that are being made at all. And, you know, on this um, Florence Price album in particular, there are four pieces on this album that are world premiere recordings. And so there's a pressure there to, you know, you want to convey the most um, real um, sort of unaltered, um, you know, version of this composer's voice. And we feel, you know, as the Callous Quartet, we feel a huge responsibility to really do justice to the greatness of these composers' works. Because, you know, we have done so much searching for any scrap of recording or information or anything. And, um, you know, if we found a recording, you know, there were many reasons why it maybe wasn't, you know, one could come across it and listen to it and say, oh, well, maybe because the recording quality is bad or maybe the group didn't have a lot of rehearsal time or whatever, you know, for reasons beyond the music not being good or or the quality of the music, people would sort of just be like, ah, it's not a good piece. And we didn't want any of that to stand in the way of people hearing just how amazing these composers were. Um, so there is a pressure there. And with Florence Price in particular it was kind of hard because, um, and for many of these composers, not only is it hard to find any information in terms of, you know, reference recordings, but even finding the scores has been quite a difficult task. Um, for quite a few of the Florence Price pieces, we were actually playing off of um, manuscripts and also what we think are sort of um, handwritten first editions. And even... In the cases where, you know, a particular piece, for example, the string quartet in A minor has a published version, um, there's a, you know, published to purchase version out there. But then we also had the manuscript and then the first edition. And when you're looking at it and you're seeing <laughs> different things in each one, you're like, well, now we have to figure out, you know, what are the right notes even? So, um... <laughs> That has been definitely a big part of the journey. And so, you know, it's just a, it's just feeling this responsibility of, of, of giving these composers the, the shine that they deserve. And, and all of that includes, I mean, and it's not an easy undertaking, but it is a fun one. Well, Abby, thank you so much for joining me today and sharing this Uncovered music. Again, this is Uncovered Volume 2 from the Catalyst Quartet, music of Florence Price that you don't want to miss out on. Again, Abby, thanks for joining me today for Classical Conversations. Thank you so much. Thank you.